Hi there. In a previous video, I created this Llama 2 Flask API that is a ChatGPT compatible API for the Llama 2 language model. So currently I have the Llama 2 language model installed in an EC2 instance. And I also have this Flask API running there. So if I go here to VS Code, I am connected to the server right now. And if I go one folder up, I have the official Llama repository in here. And then I have also cloned my Llama 2 Flask API into this directory. And if I run here api.py, it will initialize Llama 2 and it will open the API. And by default, it uses the 7B chat model. And this takes around 100 seconds to initialize at first, of course, depending on your machine. And now it has been initialized, so now we have a ChatGPT compatible Llama 2 API running on port 5000. Now, this is running only locally now, but since I'm running this in VS Code, it actually has port forwarded this from my local host into this server. So now I can go to my ChatWTF chatbot, which originally was created to use the ChatGPT API, but I have changed the URL that is used for the ChatGPT API to localhost 5000 slash chat. And otherwise it's the same because I made it compatible with the OpenAI API. So now I can just talk to Llama2. So if I say, hello, it will answer me with a response. Hello, it's nice to meet you. Is there something I can help you with? Or would you like to chat? Now I created this in the previous video. And I tested it only with the 7B model, so the smallest model. So I started to get some GitHub issues. So the first issue was that there was an error that the port 5000 is already in use. And I thought that, okay, well, they just had some Flask application running already, so they should just change the port. But then I got another issue about the same thing. And here they said, no matter which port I use, I still get the error that the port is already in use. Now, when I got the 13B model to actually work, I realized that since when you run the bigger models, you have to set this MP variable to two for the 13B model and to eight for the 70B model. And what this means is how many different processes will be started to run the model. And since the model is run with torch run and we set this in proc per node and then we pass in the script that we want to run then this will actually run the script as many times as this value is so my original code looked like this so i created this just by modifying the example chat completion script that they had in the official llama 2 repository so basically i just added this flask imports and json and then I initialized the llama here in the main function. And then I initialize the Flask application and I create a message route in which I get the messages from the request and then send them to the llama2 model. And I get the response back and I either answer with the stream response or I answer with the regular response. And here we just run the Flask API and the actual script. So it's very simple and it actually works, but if we try to run this with the 13B model, and then in fact, I have to move these up one directory. So I'll move api.py and run api.sh one directory up. And if I go here and then I run, run api.sh and sorry, I have to pass in help. And I will say that the host is localhost and port is 5000 and the model will be 13B chat. Then what happens is that it starts out okay, but then we get an error. In fact, this is not the error I'm talking about because I have to set the end proc per node. So let's do that. So let's do 512, let's do four, and let's do two processes. Then what will happen is first we get some warning and then once this has initialized, the server actually starts up, but then we fail and we got this error that the address is already in use. And the reason for this is that when we actually run the API 
we do it with torch distributed run and we pass in the api.py so that will actually be run in two different gpus and that means that flask will also be run in two different processes and of course you can't run it in the same port in two different processes and in fact you don't want to run flask in multiple processes you only want to run the model in multiple processes so this complicated the api a lot because i have never used pytorch and i haven't really done any like multi-threading or anything so i had to learn all of this to make it work so of course i went to my good friend chat gpt and here's the first thing that i asked so i explained the situation that flask is run multiple times because i use this nproc per node set to two and i pasted in my code here and gpt4 actually seemed to understand the issue and proposed a solution so it said that we could use this torch distributed get rank to get the information which process is currently running the script so then what we can do is we can check down here if we are on the process number zero and then we start flask otherwise we don't now in fact if you do this you will get rid of the error but it still doesn't work and the problem is that now we can only call the message route with the first process but you have to do the chat completion in each of the processes so in fact this function will get stuck if you do it like this because it's waiting for the other process but the other process never gets the signal that it should start generating the response so then to do some debugging i wrote this code which i will actually copy from here and i will show you in vs code so let's call this debug.py so here what i'm doing is first i am creating this write debug function that will print out the debug text but also write it into a file and i did this because the llama model blocks all output during running the script so i had to write it into a file now i could have just disabled the blocking but i didn't realize at the time that i could do that and then in the main function i get the rank which is the process number of the current process that is running this script so when we run it with torch run in two processes then this will give you the number zero or one which process it is and we print some debugging here and then we build llama and then we write the debug ready with and then the rank of the process so then i can see when each of the processes finishes this task and then i just added this infinite loop here that checks if we have a messages.json file then we read that file and then we use that to do the generation and again i have debugging here so i can see what is going on and then when we get the response then we print out the response and we delete the messages file and we write the response to a response.json and what this allowed me to do was this so if i save this and i modify my run api to actually use that debug.py and then i run this api again then what will happen is we get some debugging here at first building with one slash one building with zero slash zero and then we are ready in 20 seconds and then we are ready with zero zero now here is why i had to add the right debug function because we don't get ready with one one because that is blocked but if i go here and i do tail if log dot text then here we actually have it so we have both ready with one one and ready with zero zero and now what i can do if i start yet another terminal here i can do this i can say echo and i will pass in a message in fact a list of messages and i say role is user and content is hello and if i then write this into messages.json then what will happen if we go here we actually got an error <laughs> and the reason for the error is that i actually wrote content because vs code is weird in the terminal often it drops letters when i use the remote ssh 
So I'll add an N in here. And in fact, I wrote hello. So let me fix that as well. And let me run this again. And I got the error again because I have to actually delete the old message. Okay, let's try this again. So now we have started it. And if we go to our tail, we can see that we are ready with both processes. And if I now go here, and now I send the proper message format, hopefully. Then, if we go here, it says generating with zero, 00. And we got the response. So now it's actually answering us. Hello, it's nice to meet you. Is there something you would like to talk about or ask? And if we go to our tail, we actually get the response twice here from both of the processes. Now, I didn't really understand what that means or why it comes from both of the processes. And I still don't really understand it. I think it's something like the chat completion function will wait for all of the other processes to finish. And once they have finished, then it returns the result. And all of the processes will do the same. And that's why all of them return the full response. So this is in fact kind of an API already. So we can talk to this API by sending messages to messages.json. So if I send something else here, what is one plus one? And I go back here, then we got the result. The result of one plus one is two. So that works. But of course, this is not a very good way of doing this because we are constantly reading a file and then writing to a file. So this is not a good approach. But it helped me understand what is going on. here. Now, the interesting thing here is that if I delete the messages file up here after I have read it, because right now I'm deleting it down here, sorry, here, then what happens is it gets stuck at this because only the first process that reads the messages.json does the chat completion, but the chat completion never finishes because the other process hasn't done it. So they have to do it simultaneously. So finally, what I did to ultimately fix this issue is I ask this, how can I do the same as Python 3M torch distributed run n proc per node to my script.py, but directly in a Python script. So normally the Lama 2 is initialized this way with this torch run command, but you can actually do that directly in a Python script. So this is a very good example of how this thing works. So here we have just a general way of doing this multiprocessing with PyTorch. So we have a run function, which takes a rank and a size. And this just prints out, I am rank of size. And then we have an init process function that will initialize a process with a given function. So we pass in the function that this process should run and we give it its rank. So this will start a process to run this run function. And then in main, we set the size to two and we initialize a list of processes. And then we start that number of processes. And if you in fact do this and you put in the run function, the building of the Lama 2 model and the chat completion, then it's gonna work just as if you run this torch run command. But then I still had to figure out how do I integrate the API to this? And then I asked this, can I have the processes listen for a command from the main function and then do something when they get a command? And the answer was yes. So then it explained that I can use queues to do this. Now this is all new to me. I have never used PyTorch and I probably lack some fundamental understanding of this. And that is why I didn't do it properly in the first place. But now in the run function, we have a loop in which we are reading a command from the queue. And if the command is exit, then we break. Otherwise we print the command. So this is just an example of how it works. And here we also pass the queue to the function. So here we pass in the queue. And when we start the process, we also pass in the queue. So first we create a queues list. So we create a queue for each of the processes. And then for each of the processes, we pass in its queue. And then we start the process. And then what we can do is here we are looping five times over all of the processes and sending a command to them. So we send five commands to each of the processes. 
and then we send an exit command to each of the processes. And then we just join the processes, whatever that means. This is something they do every time with multiprocessing, but I don't really understand it. But what this will do is it will, in fact, print rank with the rank number received command command. And this will be run five times from each of the processes. So in this case, 10 times because we have two processes that run five commands each. And then we run exit twice. And then I started to implement the new version of the API. And a problem that I ran into was that I had to run the processes in two different GPUs because otherwise I ran out of memory. And then you could just use this torch device and then tell the rank of the device. But in fact, ultimately I did it a different way, which I will show you now. So if we go to the actual finalized code. So first of all, we only have one Python file now. Before we had a shell script and then the Python file and the shell script ran the torch run command. But now we have just one file. And we have just a llama imports here and then we have import for the API. And then we have some <laughs> command line arguments, which looks horrible here with this very zoomed in screen. And then I have just some magic here that detects the correct world size. So the correct number of processes for each of these different models. And this just gets the default checkpoint directory if it wasn't provided based on the model. And we just check here if we have the model checkpoint files and the tokenizer in the current directory or the one above that. Because I want this to work in such a way that you just clone the Llama repository and then inside that repository you clone my Flask API and then you can just run it from that folder. But then it will actually read the models from the parent folder. Anyway, we then initialize the queues. Now these are just global variables right now because I didn't really know how to pass these around. But in this case, I think it's fine. And this is just a helper function to create the response from the API. So because we have the regular response and then we have the streaming response. And the only difference is the key over here. So I just set the key here, either message or delta. And then we have the run function here. Now I will in fact skip to the main function so that we can actually follow how this thing works. So we start by initializing a list of the processes. And then we start all the Llama process, just like in the example. And then we wait for the Llama to be initialized. So we read all of the queues of all of the processes. Now, I only do this so that I can see initializing Llama and then starting Flask, one after the other. Because if I don't have this, it will still work but it will start Flask at the same time as it initializes Llama. So the output doesn't look that nice. So that's the only reason. And then we just initialize Flask and we pass in the message route to it. Now, what happens when we call message route? Well, let me show you. Here we have the message route API route. We get the messages from the request. So the HTTP request, which is in JSON format. And then we check that there are no errors in the messages. So we have just this simple check messages function that checks that it's a list and that all of the elements in the list are in the proper format. And then we add the messages to the queues of each of the processes. And then we wait for a response. So we have request queues and we have response queues. So we put the messages to the request queues and then we wait for the messages from the response queue. So this get method will hang until it gets a response. So we wait until we get a response from each of the processes. And then we just return the result. Now, I'm setting this response variable to just the last one because it will be the same from all of them. Again, like I showed in the previous example, all of the processes will answer with the message. So I just get the latest one. Now, perhaps I could just do response equals response queues rank zero it might work, but then the queues will not empty. So I guess it won't work. And I don't know which of the processes finishes first. So I will do this. So what does this do when we add to the request queues? Well, in the main function, when we run the processes, 
we set the function to the run function. So if we go to the run function, we first set the local rank environment variable to the number of the rank. And what this does is it tells Llama which GPU this Llama process should be run in. If we don't set this, we get an error. Or rather, we are then going to run all the Llama processes in the same GPU, and then we run out of memory. But then we just again initialize the Llama in each of the processes. And then here we just put in the response queue this initialized text. And this is only for the initial building step. So then we can check when all of the processes have built Llama. And then we go again to a loop. And in the loop, we get from the request queue. So the request queue is the queue of this particular process. And again, this will hang until we get a request. So once we get a request, and the request is in fact the messages array. And then when we get the messages, I add a system message if there was no system message. And I do this because there is also a default system message in the Llama official repo, which is horrible. So I replace that. Now, in fact, they just today removed their default system message. So I could remove this piece of code here. But in case someone is using the old version, then I will replace the default system message. And then we just send the messages to the chat completion. And when we get the response, we add it to the response queue. And then we just wait for another request again. And this happens separately in all of the processes. So the processes wait for a message. And when they get the message, then they send it to the chat completion. And when they get the response, they put it in the response queue. And then we can read the response queue down here in the message route function. So here. So again, this one will put the messages to each of the request queues of each of the processes. And then we loop through all the processes and we get the response from the response queues. And this will hang until we get the response. So then it works. And that's pretty much it. Now, we didn't add that much code to it, actually. This is 200 lines of code. I think the previous one was like 100 or 80 lines. And I did, of course, add some of these extra steps here. So, in fact, if I would remove all of this stuff, then just 166 lines. So... It's still pretty simple, but it took me a long time to figure out how this multiprocessing works. But yeah, that's basically how it works. And like I said, this is compatible with the ChatGPT API. So I have this ChatWTF project that I have previously created that uses the ChatGPT API. But I can directly use the Lava 2 API now just by changing the URL. So I just post to localhost 5000 chat. Now you can actually add here like a real domain of your server or IP address. But then what you have to do is when you run the API, you have to say host 0000. And then you can set the port as well. Port and whatever port you want to use. And you can also now specify the model. So you can say model 13b chat. Or you can use 7b chat which is actually the default. But let's use 13b chat and let's run this. So now once it has actually started this, it will then be available publicly. <laughs> There's no API key or anything, so <laughs> this is completely open to the public. So I might implement some sort of API key system. But now if I go and I grab my DNS name of this server and I update it here, so I will Connect to that one instead. And I have it in the create title as well. Then now if I go to my chat application and I say, tell a programmer joke, it will then connect to the API and it will give me the answer. And in fact, we can now tell jokes because we have removed the default system message. Oh, ho, ho, as a helpful assistant, I just can't resist sharing a programmer joke with you. Here's one for all you tech sound folks out there. Why do programmers prefer dark mode? Because light attracts bugs. Ha <laughs> ha. Now, it does respond very weird sometimes, like this, oh ho ho. But you can modify that by using a different system message. 
And they should work with the 70B model, but I haven't tried that yet because it takes too many resources to run that one. But let's try to do something fun here again with the 13B model. So how about we say explain PyTorch multi-processing. Will it do as good of a job as GPT-4? I doubt it. And we actually got an error and it says OpenAI request because this was designed for OpenAI in the beginning. I believe that we ran out of memory, which we didn't actually. So I'm not actually sure what happened there. Okay, I actually got the answer, but there was some error. It stopped short here. There's probably something wrong with my mocking of the streaming version of the API. So it might have added some new line here. So I have some bug fixing to do. Let me try this one more time. And I might as well fix it right now. So I believe that there was like a new line in the response, which should be okay. But when I'm reading it with PHP over here, I am splitting it from a new line. So perhaps Flask is adding a new line automatically to their responses. So perhaps I have to change my respond JSON to do something like delta equals response. I think I can like do something like this and do like 128. Does that make a chunked list of the response? And then for delta in deltas, I am going to say output plus equals that and I will return out. And let's say output is M. Is this how you do it? Let me verify. How do I split a string into chunks in Python? Okay, we can do this. I think there was a third one. Is there a one liner with just the bracket syntax? Okay, well, still not that nice. Python split string to chunks. Okay, I guess there isn't anything like that. So I will just do that. So I will do this one and this will be response and n will be the length. So I'll put 128 and this has to be response. Is that correct? Let's do Python 3 and let's say response is hello there, who are you? And then let's do print this but I will use just five. N is not defined. N needs to be five. Okay, that works. So we can do that. This has to be five. I guess I could call it, sorry, 128. Uh, max delta length, or just call it max len. And max len is 128. Is there ever going to be a new line in JSON dumps? I hope not. Because that would break this. If there is a new line in JSON dumps, it will break. But let's try to do that and I will run my API again. So let's see if that helped anything. So let's do this one more time. So the reason why I'm faking that streaming is that this chatbot only supports streaming. So when the tokens come one by one. But my API for Lava 2 does not support that. So I just mock it but it still didn't work. And I wonder what is the reason. Okay, it wasn't actually split into 128 chunks. So what did I do wrong? Okay, I actually got an error here. Unhashable type slice. Sorry, the response is in fact a dictionary. So I have to say response content equals response content. And I have to split the content. And I have to call this delta response and I will set it here delta response equals role response role and content will be the delta so we get the content and then we split it into parts and then we go through all of the parts and we create a response with only content as the part of the content and then we add that into the response. And I'd have to add a new line. Sorry, I have to add new line in the end. So this has to have a new line. And this has to have another just data dot. 
So now it should work. Let's start it again. Now, really, I should figure out how to stream the response. So I don't have to do this stuff. But let's now see if we finally get a message back. And in fact, we got a message back. So now it works. Sure, I'd be happy to help. PyTorch multiprocessing is a feature that allows you to distribute your PyTorch model and data across multiple processes, which can significantly speed up your training and inference times. And we have a very nice looking explanation. We have process groups, we have world rank, we have data parallelism, we have all reduce. What is all reduce? Communication function that is used to aggregate values from multiple processes. Okay, broadcast. Okay, here's an example of how you might use PyTorch multiprocessing to distribute a model across multiple processes. Okay, a very simple example. Oh, and actually it stopped generating because there's a limit on how much it can generate which you can change. So this is not the final limit. It's just right now, I think 512 tokens or something. Now we didn't actually get a title for this chat and it might be because we are sending the whole message to the title generator. So maybe it's just loading it because it took some time to create this response. Or perhaps we ran out of the context limit because this is already the full context window. So. Maybe that is why it doesn't work. But anyway, this is going to be the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or ideas, or if you want to tell me that I'm doing something completely wrong, then let me know. And thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. And in fact, we did get an assertion error because our max prompt length was greater than our params max sequence length.